Okay, good morning everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kimberly, and I am here with my colleague Hobie. Now he is um, from the RTA's Web Services Project team. Hi Hobie. Hi Kimberly. hello everyone. As Kimberly said, I am from the project team and I'm excited to share what we have been working on. Awesome, so today's webinar is part one of our part two series, all about the RTA Web Services for bond refunds. Today we are going to introduce you to the RTA's new bond refund fast track process and we also will demonstrate how you'll be able to update your details online through the web services. The most exciting topic covered today is the bond refund fast track. It is a new process designed to replicate the current process of downloading and printing your forms and getting everyone involved to sign it, whether that be sitting around the kitchen table together or scanning and emailing it to each other for signatures. The fast track is the simple digital way for everyone to submit an agreed bond refund and can be completed in as little as a few minutes. We will also provide you an update on existing RTA web services and other services. And the best part is you will have a sneak peek of our new web services launching early December. We have allowed for question and answers at the end of this session today. Now you will notice, and I have seen some questions coming through, that the questions will be open during the webinar, and I'll also be launching some polls throughout also. Now, in terms of the questions, we will endeavour to answer as many as possible today. Uh, we do get a large volume of questions. If your question isn't answered during this webinar, please visit our website to have a look at our news section as you will find FAQs, webinars, and other information. The RTA values the questions and feedback that we receive. You can also call or email the RTA if you have specific questions on 1300 366 311. Brilliant. Okay, I reckon we launch a poll. Hobie, what do you think? Let's do it. I really am interested in, um, to know which groups in the rental sector there are out there today listening in. So I've launched that poll. You should see that poll up on your screen. It's always good to give us a little bit of an idea um, in terms of who's out there and that helps us best tailor our um, webinar today. Okay, brilliant. I'll close that poll off now. Thank you all for responding. Just looking at those figures there, Hobie, it looks like the bulk of our um, attendees today is the uh, property managers or agents and we also have hello out there to um, landlords and other members. That's right. Brilliant, okay. We will move on now um, and just provide you with a little bit of an update on the bond lodgement web service. Now um, the RTA bond lodgement web service was successfully launched in June uh, Hobie, can you tell us a little bit about what the uptake has been like? Um, it's been really good, Kimberly. Thousands of customers have transitioned to the new service with around over a third of all bonds currently being lodged online through web services. Wow, okay, great. All right, well, let's move into the new, um, new web service. As mentioned, in early December, the RTA is launching web services for bond refunds bond disputes and updating customer details. Now the suite of digital services is being released together. This is because the services are commonly used together at the end of a tenancy. Now web services will offer the 100% digital fast track option, as I mentioned, for agreed bond refunds. That's right. And if the bond is reduced during the tenancy, for example, for a rent reduction, the new online refund service caters for this. I will point this out during our sneak peek. Okay, now following the launch of um, the successful launch of digital lodgements, the RTA, as I mentioned, will be offering bond refunds through our web service. I have a video here today. It's of Sam Pangeli, the Director of RTA Customer Experience, talking a little bit about the development of the web services. So now we're working on refunds. So we have decided for the next release that we're going to release a suite of forms together. So. The reason why we've done that is we're, we're conscious that at the end of a tenancy there can be multiple touch points with the RTA. It can involve multiple processes and filling out multiple forms and we wanted to provide an experience that can be a bit more seamless and, and entirely digital, so 100% end-to-end straight to your device. 
Uh, so we're releasing together the, the bond refund form, the bond dispute form, and update your details form because that's typically what customers uh, look to do with us at the end of the tenancy. Okay, excellent. Now, in just a moment, we will demonstrate actually how to submit that digital refund. And um, just to let you know that the video, um, the digital refund will pick up from the RTA refund form. Looking there at your screen, you will see um, all of our web services that will be accessed from the RTA website. So always going through to the RTA website to access our services. You can see there at the moment, we know we have the Lodger Bond service. And after the launch, we'll have the refund of bond and update your details. So launching from our web page, you'll then be um, uh, asked to read and accept the RTA's terms and conditions. And once you've done that, you'll be directed to the QGov website. You can see that down there in the um, low lower right hand corner of your screen. Now, this is where you'll be asked to either log in or register. And once you have done that, you are taken through to the RTA digital form to complete. Now, don't forget you can find out more on how to register with QGov on our website or call our contact centre. Also too, it is important to note that you do need a unique email account to create a QGov login and to access the RTA web services. Now, this is to ensure, I'm assuming, Hobie, the security and privacy of all online transactions. That's absolutely right, yes. Um, and our data from our earlier poll shows that our largest group of attendees today are managing parties. So today we will demonstrate the digital refund submission from a managing party's perspective. Okay, let's play that video. So starting off here, you'll have come from the QGO website and onto the RTA website here. You'll elect the bond refund option it's something that you can go continue on from a previous form you were going with but on this one we're going to start a new form there's a helpful hint explaining the options here you'll select what your relationship is to the bond then the next screen displays some information about your QGov account you can elect someone else if you're not the contact person for this refund and enter in their details for this example we'll put in yourself so you can also put in a phone number We'll continue on. Here you'll put in the details to do with the relevant bond. So you'll put in the bond number. As well, it'll ask for the RTA ID for the bond. You can enter that in. Okay, then continue on. It'll return some information about the bond you're attempting to refund. You'll confirm that or select another one. Then you'll identify which type of refund you're wanting to do. There's some information and a helpful hint explaining the two options we provide. Much like our paper form, you'll then need to put in the date for when the notice of ending the tenancy has been issued. If there hasn't been a notice ending the tenancy, you can select no, and it'll provide a box there where you can put in when the tenant left or vacated the property. But this example, we'll just use the notice and continue on. Here, it'll ask you if you discuss the refund with the tenant of the property. The RTA encourages parties to discuss the bond refund process. It's just, just some more information about that. You can select no, it'll still let you on, but in this example, we'll say yes. Here, you can select if you want to claim any of the bond. So for this example, we do. Here is a list of the claims that you can make. So we have a list of all the possibilities that you can claim for. And then on top of that, you'll put in some claim amounts that you wish to claim from the bond. You can also add another claim reason in from the same drop down box. You can also remove one you've previously entered. And down the bottom, there'll be a breakdown of the claim you're wishing to make on the bond, as well as some information on how you can get paid. Once confirmed, you'll continue on to the refund allocation page this is where if it's more than one tenant, you can allocate different amounts to different parties as well. If there's another party that you wish to allocate money to, some more helpful hints about what a third party is, you can allocate money to them. Once confirmed, continue on. Then there's a summary page. So we do suggest that you do confirm this information and just double check, make sure that everything you're providing is the correct amounts. 
If you have made a mistake on here, you can then navigate back to the previous screens by clicking on the titles on the left. Yeah, so you can confirm these details. Once complete, come back to the summary and then you can then submit. Here it will confirm that you have submitted your bond refund request and there's some more information about the process as well. So you can print your summary or give feedback on the form or submit another form as well. Excellent. Great. Thank you, Hobie. No now the diagram you can see here shows where you are in the process once the form has been submitted. You may have noticed um, in the video that diagram um, and the diagram does display at each stage of the digital refund process. And we also include that diagram on all of your email notifications. So this is just for ease of keeping track of where you are in the bond refund process. Uh, Hobie, I, I noticed um, you accessing the information along the way there. Um, I think you mentioned helpful hints. Yes, Kimberly, there are helpful hints on all of our forms to assist with completing the web services. Okay, yes. and we did see that from a managing party um, or an agency perspective there, organisation. Are there any um, key differences if I was a tenant submitting the form? The only differences between the forms are the wordings between the forms, um, but the process and the path of the form is the same. Okay, so more um, words tailored more Absolutely. to the tenants. Absolutely, that's right, yeah. Excellent. Okay, now after the bond refund is submitted, you will notice in the diagram the new fast track. We have a video of Sam speaking again further around the concept, um, which is new to the RTA. So fast track is a process that we came up with to replicate digital agreement. Um, I guess we had a couple of key design challenges in converting the paper form to a digital form. One of them was that two thirds of the forms that we currently receive are completely agreed. So when we receive them, we can see that everyone signed that form, they've talked about it, and all we need to do is process that payment for them. Um, how do we replicate that in a form that one person authors, one person submits? So fast track is a solution that we've come up with that replicates everyone getting around the same table, signing the paper form. Um, so once that person submits the digital form to us, we generate digital workflows to everybody else and it's their opportunity to say, we've talked about this, we agree, you can proceed straight to payment. So we give them a small window of 48 hours to respond to that fast track. If we don't get a response or they tell us that um, it's the first they've heard of it, they don't agree with it, then the normal notice of claim process commences. Okay, so Sam Pangeli, they're talking about the exciting new fast track process. If um, you are having any difficulties hearing that video, we are going to go through um, some more of the particulars now. As I said, this is an exciting new process for the RTA. Um, so really, the process replicates where you and a tenant would have ordinarily jointly signed a refund form and have all agreed. Is that right, Hobie? Yes, and as Sam said, that is over two thirds of the bond refunds the RTA currently receives. Okay, so the new fast track process will become the fastest and most convenient way to complete agreed refunds, which is the largest portion mm -hmm. of refunds. Yes, that's right. Okay, so what do we know? Fast track is a 100% digital end-to-end -end option to submit a refund agreement. There'll be no more chasing up signatures on a paper form if you choose this option, and the RTA confirms the agreement. Now, only one person submits the digital refund and the RTA requests the information from the other party. So they'll no longer be chasing up bank account details right. for tenants, example. That's right, yes. Okay, now the agreed bond refund can be um, processed um, in minutes. Um, now the fast track process is only open for 48 hours. So that means if we do not receive all responses or if the refund is not agreed, the usual notice of claim process will commence. Mm -hmm. Now this can be done in minutes. I, can you run me through how this is possible, Hobie? So the RTA notification goes out straight after the refund is submitted. Mm -hmm. And if everyone accesses their emails and responds right away, it's that easy. Okay. All right. So say, for example, currently managing parties and tenants all need to sign the paper refund. Now, once they do that, they can upload, uh, upload the signed refund. So for example, if a signed refund form is uploaded on our website, existing process, there still needs to be time allowed for, for RTA processing. Yes. And if the refund form is posted, there is postage timeframes. 
plus mm -hmm. RTA processing timeframes before the refund can be finalised. Okay, so basically the existing process of an agreed refund form takes a number of days. That's right, yes, and, and, and providing all of the information on the form is legible and not with missing information. So this can delay the process even longer. So if the discussions are had up front about the bond refund, they decide who will submit the, the form and everyone else ready to receive their RTA email notification, this process can be done in a matter of minutes. Okay, great. Now, um, we do have a video here for you on how easy it is to um, uh, respond to a submitted refund. When another party submits the refund, um, you will be notified immediately, as Hobie said. Now, you will receive an email. Now, Hobie, that email, am I right, it contains a link that will take you directly to the web services page. Exactly. We will show you now how easy it is to respond to the bond refund and fast track to agreement. This video picks up from where you would have clicked the email link and have been directed to the RTA fast track web service. So you'll arrive on the RTA page here. You'll enter in your organization's RTA ID. It's another helpful hint about that RTA ID. Your QGov details will be populated. You can also add a phone number as well. And here, you'll have a breakdown of what the refund allocation is. You'll also be able to see the, ref the, the claim reasons. And you'll also need to select if you wish to agree to fast track the refund. And then here's the summary page. Once again, confirming the details like the other forms, you'll be able to navigate back to previous screens if you wish to change any information. And then you'll be able to click submit if you've confirmed these details. And then some information about the process will be on the screen. So then that's basically the fast track process. Excellent, okay. Lots more helpful hints along the way, I, I noticed, Toby. Uh, now, for all of you out there, what do you need to remember if you're wanting to fast track an agreement? So you want to make sure you've had the discussion and ensure everyone agrees. Now, also it is important to know your RTI ID and your bond number. Now, a bit of a reminder, the RTA recently emailed managing parties and tenants with their RTA ID and bond number. So if you haven't received it, good idea just to check your junk mail or you can always find the RTA contact centre. Now, it is important to decide who will submit the um, refund and exchange current email details. And the others not submitting the form, obviously being ready to access their RTA email notification. The faster the responses, the faster the refund. Uh, is there anything else maybe, Hobie, that they need to know? Um, remember, the fast track option expires in two days. Everyone must respond and agree for the refund to be fast tracked. If a bond party chooses not to fast track the refund or does not respond, the RTA will start a formal notice of claim process. That's all covered in our next webinar. The RTA will keep everyone updated along the process with email notifications. Okay, so that um, wraps up the bond refund and the fast track. I might launch another poll now, Hobie. Mm -hmm. um, let's have a look here. Let's find out. Um, any other polls there? Okay, it appears that poll's not working. Um, we will would be interested to find out, um, we do have a survey at the end of today's webinar um, to find out how you found the um, bond refund and fast track process and there will be an area there for you to um, make comments but um, certainly interested to find out if you found that process easy to understand. Today obviously is an introduction and an overview of those processes and more of those details can be found um, information can be found on our website after the launch and we do have a trained web services help desk through our contact centre and they can actually walk you through each of the processes including QGov um, and walk you through those processes. So certainly um, if you are um, seeking some more information on bond refunds or the fast track process um, that's a good idea of where to access that information. 
So if we assume that everybody agrees, Hobie, mm -hmm. and everyone agrees, they have responded to the fast track, they've chosen to fast track their refund, what happens next? So the RTA automatically releases the payment when all responses are received and agreed. So tenants and lessors are prompted for their own bank account details during the fast track process. If we do not have account details, the RTA will contact the individual. Payees should allow for weekends, public holidays, and usual bank processing times when waiting to receive their money. Excellent. Okay, so let's move on now to the uh, other uh, service in this suite of services we will be releasing in December, updating your details. Now, we know we're hobby at the end of a tenancy. Um, our customers' details are outdated, especially when long-term tenancies are concerned. That's right, yeah, that's yeah. right. So the new digital update your details web service, it streamlines processes and eliminates paper forms. And I'm assuming it proves the end of tenancy experience for everyone involved. Absolutely, yeah. And as Sam mentioned earlier in the webinar, it makes sense for us to couple updating your details um, with the release of the digital bond refunds. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now also paper forms, just for you out there, paper forms will continue to be accepted for our customers who do not have ac access to RTA web services. That's right. Now let's see it in action, Hobie. We've got a video here. So, so this video is of an agent updating their details. Okay. So much like the other forms, you'll arrive at the RTA page after going through QGov, you'll confirm what customer type you are, some more helpful hints about those types. You'll identify that you're not a new organisation, that you are a new one in this example. You'll enter in your organisation's RTA ID. As well, for security purposes, we'll ask for a bond number that you manage. So you'll enter that in. And then onto the verification code. So we'll send a verification code to the email for your organisation. You'll then need to retrieve that code and put it into the box there. Once that's complete, you'll then be able to provide other information will update your details, so your email address, phone number, mobile number, address as well. You can update the physical address as well as the postal address or just one of them. And then your bank details, so you'll be able to update the bank details the RTA holds. And then you'll be able to just confirm what you've put in here. So once again, we suggest that you thoroughly check these details before you do them. And if you need to update any details, go back to a previous screen and click the authorise these details being changed. That's it. Excellent. That looks fairly straightforward, Hobie. I guess it is important if you are a managing party to make sure when you're completing this service, you have access to that main agent, agency email listed on the RTA records. Yes, that's for added security for your business to ensure their details can only be updated by those with permission. Okay, and is there anything else maybe that we need to know? So the author of the request will always be asked for an email address. Okay. You will only be asked to update the physical address if the address is different to the postal address we have on record. The new customers will use the service moving forward too um, before submitting a lodgement or starting to do business with us. Excellent, so certainly important checking those screens, making sure the information you have entered is correct. That's right. Because the, our systems will be updated with that information if you Spot submit on. that through. Okay, now what happens if you cannot access RTA web services or if, for example, your tenants cannot access uh, web services? The RTA does encourage tenants, property owners and managers to lodge rental bonds online um, and refunds when that is launched as it is more secure, it is convenient and it is faster for all parties. But we do understand there are instances um, where your, our customers cannot access web services. So that might be they don't have a computer um, and they're unable to get assistance from family or friends or get down to a local library. Now, paper forms are still available to download from the RTA website, or you can order a form by phoning the RTA contact centre on 1300 366 311 and it is really important to note paper forms will continue to be accepted via post. That service is still available. This web service is, is just an added service for our customers out there who have told us that they're wanting to transact with us um, online. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
RTA services update. So we have mentioned today the big news, RTA uh, web services bond refunds we know is happening in December. It is important, look out for RTA information regarding this, okay? Um, the launch details and things like that will be coming out um, in the coming days. A reminder, the RTA will no longer print bulk forms and publications from the 1st of January, 2020. Also too, um, with the launch of web services bond refunds, the bond refunds um, service will replace the existing upload facility for scanned paper refund forms from the 1st of February, 2020. And also very exciting, there will be more web services in the pipeline next year. Now, just a little bit of a summary on the web services for bond refunds. We've seen that it is today a fast, efficient and a secure way to do business with the RTA. Just a reminder out there, if you haven't registered for QGov, um, it, please do so. And we encourage you to encourage your tenants or your managing parties, landlords, etc., to register also in readiness for the launch. Um, now, also to reminder, you must have a unique email address. That's really important. And you must register for QGov to use the web services. Also, web services process is um, it's run via RTA electronic notifications. So that could include your notice of claim or your notice of unresolved dispute or your acknowledgement of rental bond. So remember, some of these notifications are time sensitive. So it is really important to check your emails regularly. So that wraps up um, our sneak peek and our discussions around the uh, bond refund web services and fast track. We might launch into some questions. Um, thank you so much for sending through your questions there. We've got a heap to cover, as I said, um, we will um, endeavor to get through these. Now, if your questions haven't been answered through the webinar, don't forget to jump online. You can also watch this webinar again and um, view those sneak peeks again if you'd like to see those. Um, all right, let's take a bit of a look at these questions. Now, in terms of QGov, a number of you have been asking about QGov, um, specifically, um, why are we using QGov? Now, um, it is a way to um, verify your signature digitally, okay? Now, um, it is a Queensland government service and it, it offers the opportunity um, to verify your signature as a substitute for um, your paper signature. And it also helps us keep your transactions online secure. Um, you've also mentioned here, we've had some questions around um, what if a tenant um, can't register for QGov? Now, um, in terms of not being able to register for QGov, Hobie, um, certainly post is still an option, isn't it? Yeah, so that's a key thing we want to put here is that the post and the paper processes will still exist. We're not taking those processes away. We're just adding in new ones for the, those clients that wish to use those processes. Um, as well, for example, uh, if you don't have access to the QGov website, you'll be sent an email notifying you that a bond refund request has been lodged. If you are unable to access the QGov site to respond to this, you'll automatically be sent an email with an attached notice of claim form after 48 hours. So the normal process will continue. We're not changing that normal process. You can fill in this form and post it to the RTA and we'll use this to process your refund. So much similar as what we currently do, mm -hmm. Kimberly. And also too for international students out there, there for example, um, you know, registering for QGov does occur online. However, we do encourage um, international students to contact QGov because they may be able to submit um, forms of identification not accepted online um, directly with QGov. So always con um contacting QGov um, for alternatives to that online registration process. Now we've had some questions around printing your summary um, or your, your bond submission. Hobie, I, I, did, I thought I did see a, a section there that said print my that's right. So on, on all of the all of the summary screens after you've submitted from that summary screen you'll be able to print a summary. Um, so we recommend printing to PDF or saving an electronic copy of this summary rather than printing a hard copy to help reduce waste. If you're using an iOS or Apple device, we recommend using Safari as your preferred web browser, but all clients will be able to do that on that screen. 
Okay, a little bit more about the fast track here in terms of um, some of you have asked what happens if um, a party doesn't agree. Now that will be covered in uh, next Thursday's webinar. If you haven't registered, um, please do so. That's all about the dispute and notice of claim process. Now, if um, a party uh, doesn't respond, for example, um, or the fast track period ends, um, Hobie, I'm assuming situation normal absolutely so it continues on to the same notice of claim process that we do mm -hmm. so it starts as soon as 15 minutes after the last party listed on the bond has responded as per the legislative process all parties have 14 days to respond to the notice of claim brilliant okay so certainly um you know parties disagreeing or parties who don't respond we will um will not be doing anything and the notice of claim process will commence absolutely that's excellent right. okay We've probably got time for one more question. Thank you so much guys for your questions here. Um, and anything else that we do get through, we will analyze and review, and it will form part of our frequently asked questions section on our website. So thank you so much. Now, if you've submitted a digital um, form using the RTA Web Services and didn't receive your acknowledgement, um, please make sure that you check your spam um, or junk email box, okay? So acknowledgements do go out once payment is received with the RTA, but certainly please check your spam or your junk email box, or of course, give us a call on our contact centre number on 1300 366 311. We understand that those acknowledgements are important to you for your records and certainly we would look into this for you. Okay, all right. So thank you so much. Um, we will need to wrap up today. Please stay on the line. Um, once I close the webinar, we do have a quick survey and as I mentioned, um, your you know, your feedback is really important to us. So please stay on. I will close the serve, um, close the webinar, which will then um, trigger a survey for yourselves before you close out. Um, from on behalf of Hobie and I, we do really appreciate your attendance today. Don't forget to register for part two webinar if you haven't already. Um, thank you so much again. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. I will close the webinar now.